After stopping the Oilers early, Bernie Kosar threw to tight end Scott Galbraith, and soon after, he found the touchdown maker. Kosar to throw, being blitzed, fires, Horn has it at the five, touchdown Brown! The touchdown machine scores again! Number 11 for Leroy Horn. It was like an early Christmas at 7 to nothing. But Moon showed he could throw outdoors and proved he's still a competent and daring runner. Back to his right, in trouble. First out to his left, he can run for a first down. 20, 15, 14, and very close to a first down. Moon wants to throw, pumps once, twice, throws to Gibbons at the two, and he walks into the end zone for a touchdown. The cold conditions gave the Oilers the shakes, but warming up on the sideline was a trusted veteran receiver. Goes over the five-step drop, steps up in the pocket, may try to run, throws on the run to Brennan. At the 40, 45, 50, and down at the Oilers' 49-yard line. Here's Kosar back to throw at the 15, looking left, steps up, throws at the two-yard line to the one. Touchdown, Brown! What a great effort by Brian Brennan! Trailing 14 to 7, Moon brought the Oilers back quickly, throwing to Givens, who fortunately was out of bounds before his catch, and Houston had to settle for an Al DeGreco field goal. The kick is up, and it is good. That made the score 14 to 10 at the half. As the winds and snow whipped off the lake in a scoreless third period, Belichick and the Browns braced for a furious fourth quarter comeback by the Oilers that featured Moon to the sure-handed Drew Hill and what amounted to the winning touchdown when Moon tossed to number 84 Haywood Jeffries from two yards out. Warren Moon with his second touchdown pass of the game and the Oilers have their first lead of the afternoon with only 2.19 to play. Trailing by three, the Browns had to turn to Kosar in the two-minute offense once again in conditions better suited for holiday card covers. And the stadium fans were rewarded with another raise-the-heartbeat drive. Dump pass to Horde at the 50, to the 45. Horde looking for room and finally wrestled out of bounds. Third and 19. Kosar throwing Brennan at the 25. 20, 15 to the 12 yard line. He's going to take a shot in the end zone. Can't find anybody to the 10, to the 5. Hit it to 3, to the 2-yard line. Matt Stover will kick it from the sodded portion of the field. It'll be a 19-yard field goal try. Snap and hold her good. The kick is shaked off to the left. No good, and the Oilers are going to win the game. The gun sounds, and the Browns are stunned. A valiant effort here in the closing minutes has gone awry. While dramatic, it was another close loss for the 1991 Browns, a team that has lost six games by a total of 17 points. Here, of coming to you from the Browns locker room on Browns Insider. And during that time, we've profiled a lot of players, from Hanford Dixon to Cody Risen, from Bernie Kosar to Webster Slaughter to the legendary Jim Brown. What we'd like to do on this Sherwin-Williams Pros No Profile is give you some of the best of our interviews, from players' kids distracting us to fan salutes to the profound. I think you'll enjoy these. You rolling? Rolling. Ready? Okay. You rolling? We're rolling over there, right? Where's the thing? You guys had that thing? Hamper, what's it like... Um being Cleveland's top dog. I mean, what does that really feel? Uh, you want to just yeah. telephone? Mueller, Kosar, take four. <laughs> you know, Larry Zonka once told me, Mike, he said, there are two people that are the most important in a football player's wife, or life, and one, his wife, and two, the trainer. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> think about what I have to do and <laughs> John who is it? Derek? 
Uh, tell them to call back in about 30 minutes. Okay, Michael, here you are, the new kid on the block, the rising star, but there was a period of time where you were described as, uh, as a water boy. Tell us about that. Okay, that was, uh, <laughs> as big as a kid. <laughs> you know, you're thinking about it. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. You've gone through a lot of personal growth uh, last year, of course, uh, marriage to Babette, and now uh, you're an expectant daddy. Tell us how that, uh, how that feels. I was going to say, I, th I thought you were going to say, tell me how that happened. I mean, no, I think, no, I don't want you to do that. <laughs> I think we know. You've been around long enough to know the answer to that. Michael, what, what's been your reaction to Cleveland football fans? So, oh, the fans of Cleveland, they're really something else. The fans in Cleveland. I definitely have to say, these are the best fans I've played in front of. I thought New Orleans had great fans, but it's nothing down there compared to you know, the, uh, the fans here. It's just amazing the, the response and the support that the, the fans give us. Nothing like it. You know, 80,000 screaming dog fans, uh, there's nothing like it. it. It sort of pumps your blood and your adrenaline starts pumping and stuff. I would say the dog pound represents the 12th man. Uh, guys, those are some, some rowdy guys up there. If I ever watch a football game from the stands, that's where Ozzie Newsom will sit in the pound because it seems like they have the most fun. With them just showing, I mean, it's just a thrill. I mean, I can't even describe it. You have to be there to witness that. I've played in a lot of stadiums across the uh, United States. Uh, played one in London. <laughs> but to play here in, in, in Cleveland Stadium is just, uh, uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, there is just a, uh, a certain uh, tradition. Uh. Many memories, you know, especially the bleachers down there, you know, those guys have always been crazy. Now they have the dog pound, it's really alive. Cleveland is really alive now, this is football. These are the craziest, the loudest, the noisiest fans that anybody could, could want to play for, and I love it. You know, I, I've always wanted to be a, a part of, of something that, you know, is backed so well by the people in the city and the fans. You know, everybody really backs the Browns, and, uh, you know, no matter where you go, there's going to be a, a lot of people there going to see the game. Chocolate. Okay. Do you want them out of here and do anything? No, no, no. no, that's fun. No, this is great. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no, this is going to be no fun. <laughs> you catch the ball, you never get that much of a chance to run with them. Okay. It must be so nice to do it when there are no kids. Hey. She's acting up. The way that she's okay. getting in general. Um, bad, John, because we can have her walk off camera if you want. A targeted man, because when Brian Brennan enters the game, pretty much everybody knows where you're going to be. Let me, I'll just. <laughs> she's right in it, so it's no, there's no way to cut it. Is this the worst one you've ever done? No, no, it's not. <laughs> And uh, we gotta do something about it. <laughs> I can't handle that. It's gonna be good at the risk. <laughs> Don't stick your nose on the TV, honey. <laughs> and uh, I asked her out a couple times, and she said no. Something. What do you have to do, hon? Courtney. Right off the bat, I knew this guy was a winner. I mean, a very organized guy that was gonna, you know, take this team somewhere. And uh, other th the other, probably the, uh, you know. Oh, forget it. It's going to be on TV. Okay, give her a drink. Yeah. Okay, let's start. I'm going to have this, huh? Don't touch it, don't touch it. Don't touch that. that yeah, it'll sting. That. It'll yeah. zap. Um, I, I think they're aware that he does something just out of the ordinary. Although, Jen Elizabeth, our oldest, did tell me that she yeah. felt like our neighbor, Dave, Last night he got up once with her and we were out of here the night, which I really greatly appreciate. That's what, sweet. Uh, what do you think provoked that? Have you thought about that? Uh, what the, the comments the Oilers yeah, made? Yeah, right. How pretty Well, you? last year in the Oilers, you know, I think that's been the rap against me all of my athletic career. That has always kind of bugged me. When I was going from high school to college, there was parents, uh... Okay, that's the thing that I was... Is there anything <laughs> usable in that hall? Oh, sure. You'll be surprised when you see it. Kathy, do you think it's tough for the, for the... Girls having a famous father. I think it's tough doing this yet. interview. <laughs> Concentrating and wondering who's gonna, who's sticking their finger where and and. <laughs> what about uh, as you look back over your career, most memorable teammates, most memorable moments? 
the personal interaction. First start that I've ever had in Houston. The Jets game. Oh. A double overtime victory over the Jets in a playoff game. That game probably stands out in my mind as the most exciting and the most interesting game I played in my 13-year my career. I didn't intercept the pass, but I broke the pass up, and it was the way I broke the pass up that was really, I thought it was just an unbelievable play. All the AFC championships I played in. It would be the championship game that uh, was such a great team effort. Gary Collins excelled, Frank Ryan, the defense held a great Baltimore offense to zero. I think uh, that's the most wonderful thing about it because it wasn't Jim Brown, it was everybody. And when we get together, everybody feels like they made a great contribution. And uh, that was our first championship in three times. And talk with Clay Matthews. He's sweaty. Three Rivers Stadium. You know, I can remember the days of the jinx. 16 straight losses over there. But now the Browns have won four of the last five, and at stake this Sunday is second place in the AFC Central Division. Plus, it's the renewal of one of the greatest rivalries in the NFL. Let's hear what some of the veterans have to say about this one. For the first 16 years of Three Rivers Stadium's existence, the Browns did not win at Pittsburgh. But since 1986, Cleveland has won four of the five played at the once jinxed facility. I think it was in 86. Uh, it's been so many games now that we've played each other. But I think it was in 86 when we finally went down. And I grew up, so my whole era of growing up, the Browns had never won in Three Rivers. And it was, uh, that was especially gratifying to me to be able to go down there and quarterback that team and finally break that jinx. Well, this is my 10th year, so I, my first three years were the last three years of the 16-year jinx. So I was on the team that broke that jinx. And uh, we almost broke it the year before, too. I was also on a team that got beat 41 to 10 down there. So since then, you know, it's gone both ways. And uh, the, the biggest memories I have of playing in Three Rivers is, first of all, it's very, very noisy. It always is because they hate us hugely. And Pittsburgh always finds a way to make you cough up a couple of turnovers. And that's how they went. That's how they either stay in the game or win the game is on turnovers. And in Three Rivers, you can't do that. If you don't do that, you, you stand a much better chance at home. Hard hits and rough and tumble football have always highlighted a Browns-Steelers matchup. The one thing about the, the Cleveland-Pittsburgh game going back was that they were always very physical games. And often, we knew what they were going to do offensively. And they probably knew what type of defense we were going to be in because we, for the most part, played a few fronts. So they knew what we were going to do. We knew what they were going to do. And it just came down to who did it best. And when it comes to blocking and tackling and so forth, who was the most physical? And that's usually what decided the games. The veteran center, Bab, knows the Steelers' rivalry can bring out the best and the most dedicated. I think that the last game, even when it's the last game and you've lost your first 10 or whatever and your, your team is pitiful, you'll see who likes to play football. You'll see the ones that enjoy playing football and the ones that want to be on the team next year will be the ones that will be playing hard the last week, no matter what the record is. Even though the guys who edit this show, the ones on the other side of the camera, have put a lot of my mistakes in there, we're using Jackie Bishop's inside look this week to run some past bloops and blunders from shows, mistakes that all of us have made while doing Brown's Insider this year. I enjoyed watching this piece, and I hope you do too. locker room and another edition of Brown's Insider. Well, <laughs> well, I'm oh, sorry, man. <laughs> hey! And I said unto Bill Belichick, go ye forth against these men in the green hat. Oh, man, why don't y'all just stop and quit? Come be good parents. Gotta be sure. Gotta give it to God. You're welcome. 
Go ahead. What about a fear of heights? It sounds like I'm saying it weird. Hype. Hype. You know, I just lost the whole moment there, you know, because I got my merge wixed. You're laughing. Knock it off. You guys go to Hades. <laughs> Take it away, Jimmy. I had a dream. <laughs> And we'll tell you how to get your young shirt to shirt to shirt to shirt to shirt to get to flex? Do you guys, can you guys get me flexing? And then we're going to flex our muscles. <laughs> Welcome to Scott's Setup Show. I'm Scott. I want to be set up. Go! Okay, okay, at least I, at least I. Bit of a break from the norm. Just a little something to break the monotony of all this hardcore training that has gotten to be a little bit out of control. It's cool to train, but what about saving your legs for the game? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, am, am I trembling noticeably? <laughs> because frankly, uh, I am. I'm going like this. What about snakes? What about snakes? What about snakes? <laughs> Come on! All right, fellas, let's hit it. One, two, you know what? Two. Go! <laughs> <laughs> They said I would never leave you. Let's go. No, which one? Let's go. I would like to introduce uh, my lead singer with Frankie and the Liddells. Bring him in, y'all. Give him a big hand. Yeah. We'll be bite rap. I mean, we'll. Be